I've been doing a decent amount of work in the GPU realm in terms of connecting GPUs or, you know, graphics cards to Kubernetes clusters. And I've even been dabbling with like, you know, Docker containers and, you know, just connecting them that way as well versus uh, connecting a GPU to a cluster. And I've been really curious about this because from a resource optimization perspective, it makes sense. Like one of the biggest reasons that we wanted to go to Kubernetes aside from a bunch of other reasons is that you can share resources pretty easily. You know, you have a pool of worker nodes and when you have a pool of worker nodes, that means you have a pool of available CPU and memory. So why not do the same thing with GPUs, especially considering GPUs are stupid expensive right now. So I've been looking at, you know, the three major cloud providers, Azure, AWS, GCP, and kind of seeing what the options are in terms of choosing GPUs. Now, ironically, I found on GKE, it's arguably the best right now. It's very, very straightforward to choose what GPU you want to use. You don't have to worry about, you know, which node and all that stuff. Well, you do have to worry about the nodes. I'll show you that in a second, but it just seems like it's a little bit more straightforward in terms of choosing the GPU, setting up the GPU sharing, which is a big one. I don't think any of the other cloud providers right now allow you to do the GPU sharing, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what it all looks like in GKE. And oh, by the way, if you're watching this video and you're doing anything local with GPUs, let me know. I'm curious what you're doing because I just picked up a MacBook Pro, the M4 Max with, I think it has like 36 or 46 GPU cores or something like that. So I want to start doing more stuff locally to kind of test it out, probably get a llama going and maybe build a rag or something like that just to see how it all works. But I'm curious if anybody else is doing anything locally. All right, so I'm in the GCP portal right now and I'm going to click the blue crate button up here. The reason why is because if you click the crate button here, it'll bring you right to autopilot, which I, I kind of wish GKE or GCP didn't do that. So I'm going to click the button here and then I'm going to click standard. All right, I'm gonna leave all this default because I don't really care about this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the node pool. And then from here, I can choose my size, of course, and all that good stuff. But more importantly, if I go to nodes, I can choose this GPU option here. Now, the cool thing about the GPU option is, and you'll see this in other clouds as well, like there are node types, but those node types are what are assigned the GPUs. Or I guess in other words, the GPUs are assigned to those specific node types. You can't use other node types, but I like how it's it's the same thing here, except it just looks a little bit cleaner. Like I don't have to guess what node type I'm using. All I know is I just click the GPU thingy and uh, <laughs> thingy, that's a very technical word by the way. And then I choose the GPU type. Now, this is what's interesting, okay? Now notice here, there should be a pricing somewhere. Okay, <laughs> 427 thousand dollars per month for this okay now this is three nodes and this is a nvidia h100 hgpus so that's kind of a lot but let me go ahead and just bump it down to one gpu and you maybe well you know what how much do you think it is pause the video just out of curiosity well if you guessed fifty three thousand dollars you were correct now I could also go to default node pools and I don't think this, this isn't going to make a difference because I'm just doing one GPU. But uh, even if I do that and I go back here, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to, Oh, it actually does make a difference. Okay. Oh, I guess this is one GPU per node. Okay. So for a small price of $17,000, you too can have your very own GPU. Now I will say this though. Let's say you want to test this out in your own environment, 24 bucks an hour. That's not bad. If you do four hours of GPU testing, a hundred bucks, not terrible. Just please make sure you, you shut this thing down after those couple of hours. Okay. <laughs> so once you do that, you pick the GPU, you pick what GPU type you want. And of course they're going to be priced different based on size, of course, but also what quantity is available now a big thing about gpu pricing right now is they're they're not in low demand but like there's not enough of them to satisfy the high demand right now when it comes to gpu stuff because of all the ai and the llm stuff you know you look at these big gigafactories and i think they're spending like three billion dollars i think the one that microsoft and open ai were going to create i don't think that's happening anymore but that one was priced like a hundred uh, hundred billion dollars i think which is insane. So that kind of brings us to why we would care about using GPUs and Kubernetes. Now check this out here. 
See this enable GPU sharing, okay? GPU sharing allows you to share a single GPU with multiple containers, okay? And you turn that on, and then you set it up based on time sharing, which is allow multiple containers to have time shared access to a single GPU, or MPS, allow multiple containers to share a single device with NVIDIA MPS multiprocess service, okay? So regardless of which one you choose, you then have this option, max shared clients per GPU, okay? The upper limit is 48. So what does this mean? This means that two pods can share the same GPU. If I bump it to 20, that means 20 pods can share the same GPU. So much like a Kubernetes cluster has the ability to you know, share memory and CPU that's available on the worker nodes for the pods, we can now do the same thing with GPUs. So if you think about it, and this is of course gonna be based on performance testing, right? You're gonna have to do a lot of benchmarking. You're gonna have to get a good understanding of how your applications will work in a pod with a shared GPU, because of course you're probably gonna get better, well maybe you're gonna get better performance if you have one GPU per pod, but it's really expensive, right? So you may have lower performance, but the end may justify the means. And that's the whole idea of running GPUs in Kubernetes. You have the ability to share out one GPU per pod, and then, you know, ultimately like that Gigafactory, that's $3 billion, it could be cut by 20, 30%. And <laughs> when you're talking billions, that's a pretty good amount of money, I would say. Right. And then that's pretty much it. You choose the machine type that you want to use. Notice here, there's only one at the moment, the CPU platform, boot disk, all that stuff we already know about. And then you click create and that's it. So in terms of GPU stuff, these, this is going to be the, the primary configuration here. And then you can also do it on the CLI. Okay. So there are a couple options here for GPU partition size, shot that size sharing strategy, and then max shared clients per GPU. Okay. So you can also do it on the cloud if you're creating it. And I'm sure there's a way in, you know, Terraform and stuff like that, that you could do it as well. So if you're thinking about GPUs on Kubernetes, you want to test it out. I would say right now, at least this is my favorite way to do it with GKEY. Again, you can do it in other clouds, Azure, AWS. You can even do it in like DigitalOcean and stuff like that. But I feel like from a UI perspective and a getting it up and running. And also, I mean, this piece here, like you usually have to manually do this in other clouds. But in GKEY, you don't. You can just click the button. That's it. Because by default, even if you have a GPU on Kubernetes, it's not automatically capable of sharing between pods. You have to go and actually configure that. But with GCP, you can get that out of the box.